Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Ojinika. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? I'm good. Great. Good morning, powerful <laughs> woman. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Congratulations Thank you so much. on your nomination Thank uh, award. You. Thank you. Fantastic Thank work you. you've done so far. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. This is yeah, what I do yes. with my. <laughs> I know my producer is laughing. Good morning. How are you, Rufai? Good morning, Archie. Perfect. Okay, you yeah. want to. No problem. <laughs> Dr. Abati, you're too far. I can't come to you. Well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Sudan, the fighting in the North African country entered a third week on Monday, despite the extension of a faltering ceasefire. More than 500 people have died in the violence and thousands have been injured. The UN is warning that the conflict could force up to 800,000 people to flee the country. This is as Egypt has finally agreed to open its border to Nigerian evacuees after several days of being stranded at their border. The chairperson of Nigerians in the Diaspora Commission, Abiked Abiri Erewa, in a statement said Egyptian authorities agreed to open their borders after Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari spoke with Egyptian President Abdel Fattah El Sisi. In Nigeria, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, on Monday attended the rally organized by the Nigerian Labour Congress to mark this year's Workers' Day. The rally, which took place at the Eagle Square in Abuja, the federal capital territory, was attended by the Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ngige, the Minister of the SCT, Mohamed Bello, as well as Pauline Talon, Minister of Women Affairs. During the rally, Peter Obi urged every working Nigerian to remain steadfast in the course of building a better and new Nigeria. All we want is a country where we will do the country where Nigerians will be proud to say that they are Nigerians. In Kenya, forensic experts have commenced autopsies of more than 100 corpses found in mass graves from the Shakahola starvation called after the police began investigations on the founder of the Good News International Church, Paul McKenzie, who incited his followers to starve themselves to death in order to meet Jesus. On Monday, the country's interior minister said investigators had completed 10 autopsies comprising nine children aged between 18 months and 10 years old and one female adult from the 101 bodies discovered last month in shallow graves. Honor sports, world number one Novak Djokovic is set to play at this year's US Open after the United States confirmed international travelers will no longer need to be vaccinated against COVID-19. The 22-time Grand Slam champion was forced to miss last year's tournament because of his vaccination status. The policy will change on May 12, allowing the 35-year-old tennis star to return to Flushing Meadows in August. Finally, on our entertainment, Fashion's Biggest Night, the Met Gala, returned on Monday with all the major celebrities gracing the red carpet at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. This year's theme revolves around late fashion designer Carl Lagerfeld, Vogue's editor-in-chief and the host and mastermind behind the Met Gala, Anna Winter, while paying tribute to Carl Lagerfeld, said he was a very kind person and hoped he would understand how many people love and respect him. Some of the celebrities who graced the red carpet include Nigeria's Grammy Award-winning singer, Thames, Gerald Leto, who came dressed as Chopin, Carl Lagerfeld's beloved cat and muse, Serena Williams, who showed off her baby bump, and Rihanna, a red carpet favorite, who closed out the Met Gala as a surprise guest. Yeah, Rihanna looked 
stunning and of course our Timmy Lade or Penny and of course you saw Bonner <laughs> Boy. Yeah. But you were saying something about her fascinator. Did you just love it? have something to talk about on her head. You yeah. know the last time at the Oscars, yes. we would never leave that down. Yes. So now we see this, um, you know. She new. definitely is making a fashion statement. Is. That is for sure. And you can see it's not just music she loves. She loves fashion as well. I wish yes. I was there. I believe Kachi, Kachi our entertainment reporter, yes, is sure there. Is. So, and, Oji, something else happened at the yes. at Met Gala. That was the announcement by Serena Williams yes. that she was yeah, um, expecting. Yes, yeah, so that yeah. was a big she one as well. Yes, yeah, she revealed her baby bump. So that's she fantastic. She revealed her baby bump. I said it there so as well. So many baby bumps all over <laughs> the place. Right? Yeah, no. <laughs> you next. <laughs> well, you all next. right. Uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Well, let's begin what's trending, shall we? Reactions continue to trail the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed's statement in which he asked opposition parties to desist from bleating about the outcome of the presidential election. The Labour Party on Monday accused the minister of pushing propaganda to Nigerians, stating that only the blind will accept the outcome of the 2023 presidential election. The party further stated that Lai Mohammed's attempt in the United Kingdom and United States to redeem the grossly battered democratic credentials of the current administration is yet another tragedy of President Buhari's eight years of leadership. Well, in the meantime, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, on Monday, clarified the recent speculations and reports of his alleged detention at Heathrow Airport in the United Kingdom, stating that he was neither arrested nor did he commit any offence in the UK but that he was only stopped for a routine immigration check because there appeared to be a duplication of his identity. Well, Obi spoke to Charles Anyogolu on prime time. Let's take a look. I was never arrested. I was never detained. And I did not commit any offense. I was stopped for a routine immigration check because there appears to be a duplication of my identity. And all this lasted for maximum of 20 minutes. And I was treated in what I do with all due respect. Just I lived in the UK from in the 90s, say from 1993, until 2005. From that 1993 to now is a period of 30 years. I have never been questioned, arrested, detained in any country in the world. I've never been, even been, for any reason, found myself in any manner being questioned for any offense. I've not committed any offense. So it was a routine immigration check. And it lasted, like I said, less than 20 minutes. Well, all right, let me take some reactions. This is from Tonti, who wrote two things. One, how did any reasonable person really believe he was arrested? Two, how did anybody come to the swift conclusion that APC was behind anything that happened there? Well, Baroness wrote, once again, he does not have a UK passport. He had a UK visa. I need the British government to tell me how they duplicated his visa with all his biometrics. I don't care about anything else, just that. Are we now saying that visas can be easily duplicated? Rufai, can you answer that? One question. I, I mean, that's a very parents. important question, though, because mm -hmm. the, the, the days I know that they used to duplicate visas were the days of Oluwole. You know what they call Oluwole? What, did that work? Ah, the, it the, worked too. Did they, you duplicate visas? Oh, and the, you can go? Oh, gee, there are many people in the diaspora watching us now. <laughs> <laughs> Is Oluwole? No. They used to travel abroad. Really? Ah, today, they are British citizens. They are doing well in their life. But there are many people that, if not for Oluwole, you get you know you have to go yes the actual visa or the documents uh, the document to go, go. get the visa washing <laughs> jewelry okay. it's deeper than all of that okay. you know but now in this day and age of biometrics and yes. all of that but you heard what he said there 
that he was told he was being impersonated. He was briefed on that. A document was released. I have not even seen the document to the effect by the British government. And once it was cleared, he was let go. And he didn't even make any capital out of it. I think this story even came to light because of somebody that was informed about it and said, oh, I can't keep quiet. And the person put out an article or something as regards it. But, you know, because it's political season, everybody makes political capital out of it. Some people have blamed the opposition. I mean, it might not be the opposition. People do things. There are fraudulent people everywhere. And the number one target you face is when you're a popular person in circulation. I'm sure people have seen tons and tons of emails of the Nigerian prince. That's everywhere. People's names have even been mentioned in scams. But once he has clarified it, that's just it. And I think the most important thing is he has clarified it. He's talked about a document that was released by the United Kingdom authorities. He's even shown the document. I think in that interview, he stated that he's shown it to Charles. Charles had seen it. I think that's just it. And I think that will lay to rest the right. matter on ground. But it will be exacerbated because it's political season. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. But please, I'm not supporting fraud. I'm not supporting any level of Oluwaleism. But I'm saying it was rife at a certain point in Nigeria. But once yeah. biometrics was fixed, then all of that was fixed. So I'm not in support of it so that people will not misquote me here. Absolutely. Well, earlier I talked about the um, Labour Party accusing the opposition. You touched on the opposition. You know the PDP also have reacted um, to Lai Mohammed's comment on opposition parties to desist from bleating about the outcome of the presidential election. Well, in a statement over the weekend, the PDP said, Lai Mohammed is treading on the path of deceit and falsehood. They further described his comment as an attempt by the All Progressives Congress to bully and blackmail the presidential election tribunal. Ayo, over to you. Well, yes, so um, Alaji Lai Mohammed did release a statement to his spokesperson, um, Mr. Shagwade, where he talked about the fact that they were um, griping about it. And he's not the first person that has spoken about it. We have heard um, Senator Ken Namani talk about the fact that just, you know, get over it. And we discussed it here that you're not, you're the same party that said, go to court. They want to go to court now or they're speaking about it. And now you're trying exactly. to stifle them or tell them not to speak up. I'm glad that the PDP and the Labour Party have responded because we talked about something earlier around, around the right of reply and it's important because people are gullible. So, and by gullible, I say it not in a, in a derogatory manner, but people absorb what they see as fact. So, after a while, as Mr. Peter Obi described this, it becomes propaganda where it seems as if there's an agenda to try to twist the fact yeah. so that people begin to believe it and then start to turn it against people who feel like they've been aggrieved. That's the danger there and that's why it's important for them to speak out. Um, Alajelai Mohammed said that, oh, you know, it, it was free, fair, the legacy of, but a number of people have come out to say that what we saw clearly was in that way. He's doing his job. We don't expect him to say differently. He's the Minister of Information and Culture working under this administration that prosecuted the elections. I don't expect him to say that the election was flawed or anything. He would defend his government. However, Leaders should desist from trying to twist the fact and allow the courts to decide. It's before the courts. If they pet, um, sign, um, um, filed a petition, let it go to court. But please, we should stop saying that they should stop making noise as if they are trying to, they are being noise makers or trying to disrupt the peace of Nigerians. Let us stop that. That's why, Oji, in a number of situations, when we have grievous cases like rape, they try to keep quiet, yes. should stop talking about it, and then it continues and we don't find justice. It is important for justice to happen so that healing can occur completely. Absolutely. Dr. Abatim. Okay, on the uh, response of the People's Democratic Party to what uh, Lajilai Mohammed said, well, the, the main point that was made in that statement is that one, Lajilai Mohammed by saying that opposition parties and their leaders should stop bleating. <laughs> what animal? What animal bleeds? <laughs> you know, even that is a very, you know, uh, a very uh, derogatory thing to say. Uh, the point to be made is that these political parties and the other presidential candidates who have gone to the tribunal, they have the right to go there because the constitution 
and Section 149 of the Electoral Act 2022 tells us that if you have any grievances, you go to the tribunal. It's part of the process. The courts look at it. So it will be wrong on, on the part of Alaji Lai Mohammed or any other person to say it's offensive for you to seek redress in a court of law. Will he have preferred the alternative of people resorting to self help Certainly not. He being uh, an officer in the Temple of Justice himself. Now, the PDP is now saying that Alaji Lai Mohammed is trying to intimidate the judiciary. It's a very difficult season for the Nigerian judiciary because everybody, so many people are very suspicious you know, of what the uh, judges will do. They will say, oh, after all, the opposition is saying, go to court, go to court. So the judiciary in that regard has a responsibility to show that you know, it's a court of law that is committed to justice and to make the point that their lordships cannot be intimidated. If you try to intimidate the court of law, you could be charged for contempt. There are no people who say, well, this is Nigeria. Right. You know, are these judges not human beings? Well, there are men and women of integrity on the uh, Nigerian bench. Uh, and I'm sure with the kind of pressure that they've been exposed to, uh, you know, they themselves will be yeah. really concerned to make sure that they do their job and, you know, ignore any attempt to intimidate them. The third major issue arising from that uh, report by uh, the PDP is that, okay, after all said and done, they say, oh, that was, uh, you know, a flawed election conducted and that it was Alaji Atuku Abubakar of, of the uh, People's Democratic Party that one. Okay, they made that point that way. Isn't that the substance of their petition Absolutely. before the presidential election petition tribunal? So all this back and forth, we should just allow people, you know, to do the courts to do their work. As for Mr. Peter Obi, I had commented on that uh, uh, earlier. You know, a lot of people were saying with all those allegations, they wanted to see Mr. Peter Obi on Arise TV. <laughs> which some people describe <laughs> as his favorite uh, platform. Yeah. So I believe now that he has spoken on Arise TV, those persons who were asking for Peter will be by popular demand. <laughs> I hope that their demand has been met and he's been able to respond to all of those issues. But I said earlier on that it's good to give right of reply to clarify. The other part of it is that, you know, Nigerian politics is so funny or I guess it's the same anywhere also in other parts of the world, that if you go into it, which is why some people say they don't want to get into politics because it's murky, because anything can be thrown at you, including the kitchen sink. If you are not careful, if you go into uh, Nigerian politics, they will go and dig up the first man, the first man that spoke to your mom, mommy, you know, in the village. I say you that uh, for your mother followed one man. So that's the nature of Nigerian politics. And I'm sure that anybody who goes into politics will understand that. Uh, but what you can do, if you feel like, is to clarify. And all of those people who abuse people on social media, I hope people realize that there is something called the Cybercrime Act, right? Which makes it very clear that you cannot go and abuse people electronically and assume that you can get away with it. If the people decide to follow it up, you will have to come and explain yourself before yeah, a, a court of law. Yeah. And there have been cases yes. like that. Yeah, so people, it, because a lot of people went to town, they started saying Peter Obi is this, Peter Obi is that. So it's good that he has uh, offered that uh, clarification. clarification. Well done. We'll take another story. Last week, a Lagos State Traffic Management Authority official, Latif Kaber, received a cash reward of 100,000 Naira after being spotted channeling flood with his bare hands to ease traffic in the Ojota area of Lagos State. Kaber went out of his way to ensure the free flow of traffic, which attracted commendations from members of the public and was hailed for the selfless act. Other traffic wardens were urged to emulate him. Well, this week, last month officials have been spotted cutting down trees to ease traffic in the K2 area of Ikorodu Road. I mean, I really wanted to take the story of Kaber because what do we say? I mean, this was a selfless act. I wanted to take it last week. Commendations um, and that 100,000 Naira hopefully will go a long way. But this one that I saw here with uh, the cutting of trees, 
I don't know what your thoughts are on that particular hmm. situation there. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit iffy about the cutting of trees, though, hmm. you know, to ease traffic. And at first, <clears throat> commendations to Kabir, yeah. selfless act, but it's also a reflection of how destroyed our society has been. Yes. We can't channel water properly. I mean, who's supposed to be that person in charge of drainages? Uh, Dr. Bati used to talk about. <laughs> go, 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 go. His name is Joe Igbokwe. Ah, uh, my, <laughs> my very good old guy, Joe Igbokwe. Yeah. Uh, it shows that people are not doing their duty. Mm. Well, that's more officials. There's so much controlling traffic in the first place. We're a mega city. We should not be using our hands to deep and remove drainage oh, channels that are blocked. Nice it doesn't speak well of a mega city. No. It doesn't at all. But commendations are very selfless. But cutting trees down to ease traffic, I mean, those trees have a role to play there in terms of environmental balance of society. Yeah. So what's the correlation between the trees and the traffic? And if there was, you know, the need to cut down trees to be able to ease traffic, is there a Ministry of Environment that can conduct that effectively? I wonder. And, I mean, I don't know. Did the tree grow onto the road? <laughs> I don't get it. Because we are complaining that we don't even have enough trees in Lagos. That's, That's why we have crazy. most of the problems we have as regards climate change. So I mean, what, what, what did the tree do? I mean, when you look because at we that, cut it, trees well, so indiscriminately. It, 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 it appears that it was a rainfall and then the tree fell. But it, I mean, the story so if is the, that... So if the tree fell, yeah. then yes, they can evacuate. I support him on yes. that. Commendations to him appears, on that too. Yeah. But if it was indiscriminate cutting of tree, I don't support him. Mm -hmm. But if rain fell and, you know, he was just trying to clear the tree off the road, kudos to a him. Them, yeah. But also, we should not even overstretch Lasma. Mm -hmm. There are authorities that should be able to do that. And they are paid to do all of that. Yes. Not in Lasma officials that he's burdened with controlling traffic, which is not an easy job in the first place. Now going out there to be the one cutting tree and everything. Eh? No, you see, alagiato. <laughs> the people that smell, uh, that, that, that kill wood are different. <laughs> and that's more official should not be. He could have gotten himself injured. So what was the insurance? If he was trying to that's cut now, issue, well, yes, if he was trying to cut now and the, and, and, and the, uh, the cutler strikes him in the hand, what's the insurance for his life? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Doctor, but I can see a smirk on your face. I don't know where the smirk was coming from about the tree cutting. <laughs> what, what was that for? Well, you know, the, the Green City campaign yes. is something that is done in many parts of the world because of the you know, the uh, linkage between a green environment, yes. the ecosystem, the well-being of the people, and also air quality. In some other countries, in fact, you will not dare cut down a tree. Mm -hmm. Even the tree in front of your house. If you have to cut down the tree, you must report to the authorities. That's one point. You know, and you could be fined. But here in Nigeria, even along the airport route, even when no tree has fallen, you see uh, government officials just removing the trees. The, one day when I saw them doing that, I was shocked. I thought, what is this? You know, some of these trees even beautify the environment. Mm -hmm. About 13 cities in the world are, you know, uh, uh, highly recognized because they are green cities, because of their investment in, you know, sustainable environment conditions. Second, last month is a creation of a law. Inside that law, there is nothing that says tree cutting is part of the job of uh, LASMA. So whoever is the head of uh, LASMA should provide training for his team to make sure that these people focus on their core mandate. Absolutely. I Instead of going so. to control traffic, they are cutting trees. Even if a tree fell, there, there must be an agency of government that will, that will deal with that. Right. And look at this one scooping water with his hand. Okay, he got uh, 100,000 naira. Well, that really is not his job. Oh, right. If I, in, the, in the first place, there should be no flood. Absolutely, absolutely. If this were a better managed environment. You may celebrate the fact that he was given 100,000. Okay, we, the rainy season has started now. If care is not taken, now that uh, last month is uh, uh, giving the officials 100,000, if I went there is real for you will see some last month officials who will be carrying buckets up and down and they will take videos so that they took and collect their own one hundred thousand. Can we get serious here? Well, all right. Shall we let's take our final story. Well hmm. an association known as the White Witches and Wizards 
<laughs> of Nigeria is reported to have endorsed President-elect Paula Ahmed Tinubu's forthcoming inauguration <laughs> on May 29th. The group disclosed this on Monday that they will provide about 300 witches and wizards <laughs> to ensure that he has no harm comes to Tinubu's way and urge Nigerians to pray for the president-elect to have good health and long life. The spokesman for the group, Okure Oboi, is said to have also assured Tinubu that they are cleaning and detoxifying the Abuja environment for him to operate safely. I, I feel like I feel like I've heard everything. I mean, this one. They, they, they said that... <laughs> Tinubu spiritually won. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't think I was going to laugh. I have been trying my no, best. No, no, you have a, have a right to laugh. I'm Is sorry. it not one journalist or one platform that said he swears to God that Bola Tinubu won the election? A journalist <laughs> on a platform came out openly and said, I swear to God Tinubu won the election. No, a I, journalist. You know how they say that everybody plus their um, um, dog and goats have gone to see. Now everybody plus witches and wizards are going to secure the bank, secure their interests. So I'm praying for you. We are looking up, you know, oh that God, God will help you. Oh my God, I've never heard anything it's, like this before, Dr. Batten. Really well, uh, I'm not surprised. I first heard of this uh, National Association of White Witches and Wizards. They've been involved in Nigerian politics <laughs> since uh, <laughs> they returned to democracy. But don't be surprised. I, I've not, we've not heard from the National Association of Prostitutes. Oh, no, 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 they, they two, no, 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 they two also endorse uh, presidential right. candidates. All right. <laughs> but in any case, I hope they say they are already detoxifying Abuja yes. to yes. make Abuja safe. They are cleansing Abuja. I hope they are not going to ask uh, the president elect <laughs> for money. <laughs> and if they ask for money, that money should not come from public posts. Right. Let uh, the president elect decide on his own whether he wants to pay for their services Absolutely. or not. Well, all right. You Thank swear you for the National Association of Protests. All right. I will try. Thank you all for your great analysis as always on What's Trending. Well done. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.